Goodness, who do I want to take with us if I potentially uh, rat him out? Maybe Parvati. She's she's usually a pretty good, um, you know, moral compass. And then in that case, Sam probably wouldn't be bad because then he doesn't care. But I'll take Ellie because she kind of balances Parvati out a little bit. Uh, we'll see how this goes. I don't know how um, how turning him in will actually go. Like I know nothing about this decision. I don't know which is good and which is bad. If one is good or one is bad, you know, and I, I think that that's actually a pretty good spot to be in. I've kept myself busy in your absence, optimized my formula. I'm now confident I can revive the remaining colonists. Okay, good. All I need now is the dimethyl sulfoxide. I'll take as much as you can give me. So what happens if I give him this and he's only able to wake up 22% of it? <laughs> Um, let's hear it. Forget about your chemicals for a second. The colony's on the verge of collapse. Yes. What? Oh, yes. Well, that's obvious. Anyone with two working lamps can see this colony slouching toward oblivion. Yeah. Why do you think we've been doing all this? I revived you to help me save Halcyon from annihilation. Okay. Get, it's get worse. The chairman's planning on freezing every worker in Halcyon. It's true. Or the board's got a plan to save us. They're going to freeze all the workers. No, it gets worse. Hold on. Let me see if I understand this correctly. You're saying that Halcyon's on the brink of total collapse? And the chairman's plan to save all of us is to save himself? Yeah, that's it. I always knew Halcyon was heading toward a system's collapse, but I never imagined we were already there. The board made this crisis, and now they want to solve it by freezing the rest of us? That's not a plan. That's a goddamn escape clause. That makes two things we don't have. Time and chemicals to revive the other settlers. None of this was supposed to happen. I was supposed to revive the Hope's colonists. We were supposed to have enough time to solve the problem before we all starved. Hmm. This is, uh, this is interesting. I have quite a bit of thoughts on the choice to turn him in or not depending on you know what choice you take and I'll say that afterwards but I found your chemicals in the ministry the board was testing them on human subjects human test subjects oh, that's grotesque that's unthinkable that's and that's coming from exactly him exactly what I'd expect out of the board yeah uh, these are all the chemicals I could get anymore and I would have killed the subjects yeah damn that's not enough not nearly enough for the whole ship I could revive a handful of settlers. Maybe, possibly, you know, ten. We're out of time. We're out of chemicals. We may very well be out of options. If the board has their way, we're all going to be spending the rest of our lives frozen in stasis. Do you realize what this means for the hope? For your fellow colonists? The board's going to kill them all. Toss them out into space just to make room in their hibernation chambers. Hmm. Um, we need to think about this. There has to be something we can do. Or so that's it. We just give up all the trouble I went through for nothing. Or the colony is a mess. I'll be glad to put it behind me as soon as I get the chance. Now, uh, we need to think about it. Short of lining up every member of the board and shooting them in the back of the head. Not a bad idea. Do you know what's waiting for us on the Hope? Scientists, engineers, artists. The brightest minds Earth ever sent us. Uncorrupted by the board. The board's going to dispose of them all and transform the hope into a prison for the rest of us. They're likely on their way to the hope as we speak. We need to get to those colonists before the board. I have enough chemicals to start reviving a few of them, but no easy way to get them off the hope. Uh, Science 45, there is a way. It's not exactly safe, but we could skip the hope into the system. Ooh. Or I'm open to suggestions, or can we just skip the part where you asked me to do something insane? No, let's do let's do the science one. Merciful gibbering law, you're a genius. We bring the hope to us. Skip the entire ship across the distance of colony space, right next to my lab. Uh, engineering 30. Oh, see, this is good. This is the reason why we put points into this stuff, right? The hope's probably damaged. We'll have to root power from the unreliable. Step ahead of me, but I'd 
perceive the shape of your plan. If we link up the hope to the unreliable, then use your navigational computer to calculate a reasonably safe vector, we can skip the entire colony ship into the rings of Terra 2. I don't know much about skip drives, not the physics, anyhow. I do know the hope's real massive. How's our bitty little ship supposed to skip it? Excellent question, my sharp-witted mechanic. You will use your own ship to power up the Hope's skip drive. Your navigational computer can handle the rest. Hm. I've got a healthy disregard for personal safety, but this sounds crazy, even to me. Your instincts are correct. By any reasonable definition of sanity, this plan is crazy. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> You'll need to switch on the Hope's auxiliary power using the unreliable. Then, head to the bridge. Your navigational computer, Ada, should be able to activate the Hope skip drive. Once you've skipped the Hope next to my lab, I'll have easy access to the frozen colonists. I can start reviving them immediately. Okay. I like this. Uh, I got some questions. Certainly. How can I help? Let's see, let's see what we got here. Uh, should I expect any resistance? Just so we're clear, you know, skip drives aren't supposed to be used like this. People aren't going to notice a gigantic colony ship slamming into the rings of Terra 2. Unlikely. The hope is as massive as the Groundbreaker, but compared to the rings of Terra 2, positively minuscule. Okay. The board might notice, possibly, depending on the position of their heads relative to the depth of their collective posteriors. <laughs> <laughs> Good line. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, just so we're clear, you know skip drives aren't supposed to use, be used like this. Skip drives were never designed to be used within a system, but I skipped my ship across Halcyon when I rescued you, and that turned out fine, mostly. That is, I ruined my ship and nearly killed myself in the process, but the maneuver was well within acceptable margins of risk. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> never tell me the odds. Okay, that's it. You know what? I might be down for this. It's, it's really, um, I don't know. It's really risky, but I might be down for it. Do I have anything else to return to Phidias now that you have? Uh, wait. Oh, that's because send the tracking signal. Right. So I could go and rat him out, but I don't want to. Yeah, let's talk to him again. I hope you're not thinking of ingratiating yourself with the board. Chairman Rockwell and his cronies are not your friends. You would say that, wouldn't you? They might tempt you with promises of wealth, but don't be fooled. They're just using you for their own ends. But aren't you doing the same thing? What's on your mind? Uh. Okay, okay. Here's, here's where we talk about this, because I think that this is an interesting thing. I like it in games, especially narrative RPGs, where they don't give you a definitive path of right or wrong, where you kind of have to make the choice for yourself and they don't really tell you what the outcome will be. They just say like, Hey, make the choice that you will make, you know, either you turn in Phineas because you think he is a little crazy and you believe the board and you want to, you know, help Halcyon by, by siding with the board or you side with the board or you side with Phineas and try to take out the board and still anarchy. Like which choice is actually going to be the better choice. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter what choice the game designers think or the narrative writers or anything like that think is the better choice to make. It matters what the player thinks is the best choice to make. And games that do it successfully give you the option of one way or another or, you know, multiple ways in some instances. But they do it by not holding your hand. They just straight up tell you, hey... This is an option. You have to figure this stuff out on your own. And I think that's one of the benefits to tabletop RPGs, like playing D&D &D with a good dungeon master, will re result in these moments quite often where your party of friends or players, whatever it is that you're playing with, will often debate back and forth on this and be like, what is the best option to make? What is the best choice to make here? And some people may disagree with you on your 
opinion of what you should do. And that kind of conflict is really good because conflict in a game or in a story creates tension and then tension needs to be resolved through narrative beats and whatnot. And I think if you're doing narrative in a game correctly, it should give you this kind of situation where I'm not sure which is the right option here, but I need to go with my gut and, and me going with my gut, me taking that initiative and making the choice for myself is player choice. It's not guided choice. It's not intended choice. It's not anything like that. It is literally player choice. And I think that is really, really good to have in games. You saw in the very first um, zone that we were in, in Emerald Vale, that was perfect, like the way they did that. And this kind of is following suit. I still don't know what choice to make here, but I am going to go in with my gut and say, look, they wanted me to bug your lab. Uh, I can't tell if you're being sarcastic. <laughs> Sarcasm, the last refuge of the witless. Mm. The adjutant must have sent you some kind of tracking code. If you don't use the code, she'll suspect you betrayed her. I think you should use the code and send a corrupted tracking signal. That should buy me some time. Right. I get it. You want to prepare. The board's going to catch up to me sooner or later. This way, I'll have time to set up some particularly nasty defenses. Use my communications terminal to corrupt the tracking signal. While the board busies themselves trying to decipher it, I'll have plenty of time to prepare my defenses. Okay. Um, wanted to talk about the hope. Certainly. How can I help? See if he has any other things there. Should I expect any resistance? surprise me. When I pulled you out of the hope, the board nearly intercepted me. I expect they stepped up security since my little act of larceny. Goody. Well, no more questions. I'm ready. I know you're wondering why I'm doing all this. Why I believe the people on the hope are the answer to the colony's problems. The hope is wow, look at that of humanity's most brilliant thinkers. Scientists, engineers, experts in their field. If we work together, we can still find a way to save Halcyon. The board would have us believe Halcyon is beyond saving. I choose to believe otherwise. If there's even the slightest chance we can save Halcyon from oblivion, then we have to take it. Yeah, I agree. Can we talk? What? Oh, now you want to talk. Actually, we are going to head over here to his thing and send the tracking signal and corrupt it. Send corrupted tracking signal. I do agree with him on that. Stalling surveillance tracking signal and relay running cacophony protocol, replicating artificial interference, modifying signal noise ratio, establishing connection, error, signal status weak, board surveillance protocol failed, signal fidelity has been compromised. This terminal will be, will attempt to establish a new connection once every cycle. Cool. Um, return to Ada. Uh, Sophia said she'd contact you as soon as her office picks up Wells' location. Head back to your ship and see if Sophia has a message for you. All right, let's do that. But these nerds want to talk, so hey, Ellie, what's up? So we're really going to do this? Yeah. I've seen lots of crazy, Captain, but Phineas is in a class of his own. Do you really think he knows what he's doing? Sending us to skip the hope into Teratu's orbit right under the board's nose? Uh, not entirely sure, but it's our best chance. There's a sobering thought. Makes me want to drink. <laughs> I think this whole plan's insane, but it'll make a good story. You know, if we survive. Speaking of, I get that Phineas thinks he's saving the colony, but what about you? Why risk your neck on this crazy scheme? It's a good question. Uh, well, what about you? You're still with me. Or the people of Halcyon deserve a chance, so do the colonists of the Hope. Or is it, it's just my kind of crazy. Actually, that is probably the most accurate answer. What else am I going to do? For better or worse, my future is tied to Halcyon now. Or this sounded better than being home alone on a Saturday night. Um, the people of Halcyon deserve a chance. I think is a good option, but I really want to go. It's just my kind of crazy. You know what? I think this is our character. I'm going to try to forget that you've been calling the shots this whole time. <laughs> Still, all this depends on the other Hope colonists. Are they going to pull us out of the shit? Or are we all just going to leave a bigger, uglier stain on this corner of the galaxy? 
Um, if they're half as capable as me, we'll be in good hands. Uh, I'm not optimistic, but we've got to try something before we all go down. Or we won't know until we make it happen. Yeah, I like this. If they're half as capable of me, we'll be in good hands. This is why I like you, Captain. Well, whenever you're ready to do this, I'm with you. Anything else? No. Let's do it. Um, uh, I got it th that you, I, I've got. I take it that you've got something to say about Harlow. It'd be interesting. Let's see what she's got to say. What did I tell you? His down with the man shtick was just an act. No one who yammers that much means half of it. Uh, it's hard to know who to trust. Don't say I'm so excited. That's what. That's what Felix is. That was Felix's friend. Eh, it's hard to know who to trust. Take a page out of my rule book. Don't trust anyone. Then it's easy. Do you trust me? Just because Harlow turns out to be a crook uh, doesn't mean that everyone's like that. Don't get all mushy on me now. Come on, what did we just learn? People look out for their own interests. It's a fundamental law of nature. Same as gravity and conservation of motion. Um... Except we've created artificial gravity. This is why I hate metaphors. <laughs> Look, I see a lot of people, inside and out. When you get down to it, we're all made of the same stuff. Once you accept that, nothing much surprises you. Right. Um. Maybe you're right, but I'd rather try for something better. Well, let me know how that works out for you. Oh, I will. Anyway, you really expect me to believe you're working for the board out of some high-minded idealism? Uh, no, but that's not the point. You're right. The point is that self-interest is like self-pleasure. No one wants to admit it, but everyone has a hand in it. Wow. Enough about Harlow, though. Anything else? Right. Uh, let's go ahead and go back. I don't think uh, anyone else would want to talk to me, but I'm really curious what Ada's going to say when we get back to the ship. This whole... Man, oh, we're about to level again. That's great, man. The 125,000 XP was great. This whole situation we find ourselves in is cool. I like, uh, again, like I said before, feeling like I have actual choice in a story as opposed to Captain, none. I hope to you have Oops. a message from adjutant Sophia Akari. This got too close. I'm impressed, Captain. I almost expected you wouldn't go through with it. Unfortunately, Dr. Wells found a way to corrupt the signal before we could pinpoint his location. Still, it's only a matter of time before we find him. Uh-huh. Come visit me in Byzantium. We need to have a talk about the future of this colony. Right. Byzantium's a big place. Meet me in my office. I've authorized your ship at my personal landing pad. Oh. Adjutant Akande has ended her call. Rather rudely, if I might say, <laughs> considering she didn't sign off. Will there be anything else, Captain? No. Ah, oh, there's the level up. All right, let's get this done. So, uh, should we pick, put lockpick up at 90? I think we should. The science, medical, and engineering all really helped us. I mean, it might be worth us for to, to get those stuff up because we're about to go into a situation here where that stuff might be really useful. Like having high engineering may very well help us. Uh, I don't know. I guess our engineering will be higher with Parvati in the party. So maybe we go with that. But I think at the end of the day, I don't, I don't really know. I really want that lock picking up. Let's go with our gut. Let's go with the lock picking what we were headed for anyways okay close that out right do we actually go see what she's up to let's let's go see um let's go see what she wants we are now in orbit above Byzantium captain thank you I'm really curious what she wants us to do um, again, we're going to take Parvati and Ellie. I feel like they're good moral compasses. One is kind of on the other side. Well, Nyoka and, and Parvati probably would be better, but they're sort of on one side or the other, usually. So they, they kind of balance me out a little bit. Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. Yeah. It's gone. Not so fast. Uh, what do you need? 
Just gotta check the list. All right, you're clear. The adjutant's expecting. Yeah, I know she's expecting me. This is gonna be curious. Um, oh, I wonder. I wonder if you could just take her out. Surely it's a possibility, right? Also, we have 90 lock picking now. Can we get back into this? This requires 100. We have now have 108. Not sure these people are gonna see us or not. Huh. What's in here? Anything good? Ooh, some, uh, 450, uh, 450 credits on the, the ground. A bunch of drinks and it's like, okay, well, maybe it wasn't worth getting our lock picking up just to get into here, but maybe it was. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. Probably wasn't. I don't think it was. I admit part of me expected you to stand by your old friend. For better or worse, Wells was responsible for putting you back on your feet. That said, he's also a wanted criminal. For information regarding his whereabouts, you are entitled to collect a reward from Percival. Oh, let's collect the re reward and then just <laughs> go back onto his side. Um... Uh, Let's see here. Tell me why you wanted to see me. I understand you've infiltrated the ministry. The things you discovered there must have been shocking. Well, a little bit. Even disturbing. Halcyon is on the verge of a total systems collapse. The truth is ugly and difficult to accept, but we must accept the truth before we can move forward. Malnutrition is already a problem. Disease will come next, followed by starvation, followed by a breakdown of society. Followed by extinction. Oh, okay. I know this must come as a surprise to you. I imagine you have questions. What's in this for you? There's gotta be an angle. There always is for people like you. I appreciate your skepticism, Dr. Fenhill. But I'm not doing this for any personal gain. My angle is the preservation of our colony by any means possible. Nothing more and nothing less. Is that why we were suffering plague in Edgewater? Malnutrition? All those folks sick and dying and you knew why the whole time? See, this is why I bring her. Yes, Miss Holcomb, we knew why. We've known for some time that Edgewater was dying. The colony itself is dying. The suffering you experienced in Edgewater, the disease, the starvation, will soon spread across Halcyon unless we act. I won't pretend the truth isn't damning. Yes, the colony is on the verge of collapse, but there is a way to save it. Uh, uh, we need to talk about this lifetime employment program. I'll answer however I can. You don't honestly believe all this lifetime employment nonsense, do you? Or how long do we have? What does any of this have to do with me? What's your take on all this? Let's ask about the lifetime employment nonsense. The Lifetime Employment Program is not some malevolent strategy of an evil mastermind. There's no dark secret buried in the fine print. The program is logical, it's reasonable, it's merciful. And most importantly, it will work. Um, I saw the presentation. Rockwell wants to sacrifice the colony to save Byzantium. Byzantium is the beating heart of our colony. And as long as Byzantium survives, Halcyon may one day recover from the collapse. We must protect this city at any cost. Help me execute the lifetime employment program, and you will have earned a place of honor in Byzantium. You will live in comfort and want for nothing. Um. Yeah. No more questions. Tell me why you wanted to see me. We need to talk about Emerald Vale. You handed Edgewater over to a band of dissidents. I can't have this. Adelaide McDevitt and her people have no place in the Halcyon that is to come. Edgewater needs to go. I want you to wipe the town out. No survivors. I get that you board types are all about efficiency, but isn't this a bit much? I'm asking your captain to amputate a rotting limb from the colony. I'd expect you to understand, Dr. Fenhill. You're a monster. Someone has to be. Now is not the time for half measures, Captain. I need a decision from you. 
Um, yeah. I don't understand. What did Edgewater do to deserve this? You replaced a loyal, if hard-headed, town leader with a revolutionary. Adelaide's people have turned Edgewater into a hub of dissidents. These people are dangerous. They're going to become more dangerous after the collapse. We need to put them down. Now. Um, why me? Because right now you're the only person I can depend on. My hands are tied by endless rolls of red tape and bureaucratic limitations. Yeah, I don't believe that. Halcyon is going to collapse while the board hems and haws and debates minutia. We need to act. And you're the only person with the wherewithal to do what's necessary. I'm not asking you to be a murderer. I'm asking you to be a surgeon. Edgewater is a necrotic limb on the body of the colony. It must be severed. Um, Adelaide's people are self-sufficient. They're not a strain on the colony's resources. Don't fool yourself. The dissidents occupying Edgewater are rebels harboring dangerous and seditious ideas. Left to their own devices, their numbers will grow. Graham Bryant and his merry band of morons caused enough trouble on Monarch. I won't risk the same thing happening in Edgewater. Well, you're completely insane. I like that. No, allowing thousands of colonists to starve to death because we could make one cold-blooded decision is insane. What I'm suggesting is absolutely logical. You talk less like a human than mechanicals I've known. I am responsible for every single human life in this colony. Do you imagine I relish the thought of killing some of them to save the rest? Yes. Steal your spine, Captain. Do what needs to be done. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say new. Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be, Captain. I rather like you, and I'd hate to have you shot for disobeying a direct order. Um, you know what? I might have to fight my way out of here. I'm disappointed. I was so sure you had potential. All right, here we go. Kind of had a feeling that was going to be the case. All right, now we got some guards to take care of. Yep. Man, I like this gun. This is a nice gun. All right. Get Parati in here by using her <laughs> skill to teleport her in. Tactical time dilation. Let's finish that guy off. Yeah, the guy's coming up next to me. This is a slaughter. All right. They won't try that again. I think we're good. I think we're good. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, let's loot all them. I I uh, could have said yes and then just walked out, but honestly, I don't think um I think my character has it in him. That's just, that's just ruthless, you know what I mean? Down we go. Whew. Well, it's a nice little break. I have a feeling we're going to have to uh, find our way back out. Some more. Is there a way for me to just quick travel to my ship? No. Okay, here we go. Hey, guys. How do you know? How do you know we're against each other now, right? Like, these people don't know anything. Unless someone radioed down. All right, here we go. Oh, I had to reload. That's so stupid. All right, I need a heal. Can we please reload this gun? How long does this reload take? Way too long. All right, here we go. Let's try to uh, launch a couple of these. <laughs> I just face planted. It was amazing. Okay, let's switch guns. Here we got a couple shots left in this one. All right. Goodness. I don't think Byzantium is going to like us. I honestly am not too certain about us coming back here ever again. So let's just pick up everything we can now. Okay, we're probably going to be wanted by the board. Probably. Anything there? No. 
Alrighty, well, let's go out to our ship. I bet there's a couple guys out here, too. Let's, uh, snipe them. Hey there. Man, I really like this gun. I really like the pistols in general. Oh, don't have any more tactical time dilation. Loot those. Loot that. Alright, oh, I think it's time to go jump the hope. Um, I don't think it's gonna necessarily work. Maybe I shouldn't have killed all if these people. If you stopped in the engine room, would you ask Parvati to send Sam down to the bridge? Yeah, you would want Sending that. Sending a corrupted tracking signal to the board was quite clever, if I might say, Captain. Oh, you're welcome. Right, uh, let's go back to this. Keep secret but not forgotten. Well, hey, we kind of took care of Adelaide there. I'm not gonna have to worry about any of that, so... Um, I don't, I'm probably not going to model any outfits. Uh, I need to take Max to the Hermit and set up a dummy beneficiary account for Ellie. So, we should get these done first. And I think we should go do Max's thing on Skilla first.